Hello everyone, we have yet another movie starring Marvel's web-slinging superhero, Spider-Man Homecoming, directed by John Watts and starring Tom Holland and Michael Keaton. Holland, of course, plays Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, and after the events of Civil War and with Tony Stark's blessing, he becomes the friendly neighborhood superhero we all know and love. And for a while, he keeps things relatively simple, stopping bike thieves and the like, trying to balance life as a crime fighter and a high school student. But then one day, he stumbles upon an alien weapon smuggling ring. It's New York, it happens. Led by Adrian Toomes, aka The Vulture, played by Michael Keaton. And he takes it upon himself to stop these ne'er-do-wells, while trying to keep up with his schoolwork at the same time. So I don't know if this is the best Spider-Man movie they've done so far, but I would say it's one of the best. It's definitely up there. I found it very entertaining from start to finish, and it was incredibly funny. I was surprised at just how much I was laughing my ass off through this movie. I really like Tom Holland in Civil War, and that hasn't changed here. I still like him in Homecoming, and it's really nice that they finally gave us a Spider-Man who feels like a kid, something that we really haven't had until now. I really liked his costume, and I liked that they gave him his own version of Jarvis, voiced by Jennifer Connelly, which is kind of perfect. If you don't know, Jennifer Connelly's husband is Paul Bettany, who did the voice of Jarvis, so yeah, that's really good casting. And more so than the other films, I thought they really nailed the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man thing. I mean, he starts out foiling bike thieves and giving people directions, trying to stop a car thief without realizing it was just some guy who had locked himself out of his car and was trying to open it with a coat hanger. Oops. And I'm so glad that he actually has friends in this movie. That was one thing, as much as I enjoyed the Sam Raimi movies, well, two of them, that was one thing that I never really liked about them. I never bought Peter Parker as just being this complete loner. That never made sense to me. Yeah, he was a total dork, and Tom Holland in this movie is a total dork, but total dorks still have friends. They hang out with other dorks. That's how that works. I was a total dork in high school. I still had friends. Hell, I probably had more friends than some of the so-called popular kids, come to think of it. There are more of us than you realize. We're everywhere. And his best friend slash sidekick Ned, played by Jason Batalon, was great. I really liked this character. And I loved his transition from Peter's friend to the guy in the chair. That was so much fun. Michelle, who is played by Zendaya, was a lot of fun. Kind of an oddball, bit crude, but part of her charm. Laura Harrier did a pretty good job as Liz Allen, who is Peter's first crush, although they didn't really do a whole lot with that relationship. So if you were hoping to see something as good as Peter and Gwen from the Amazing Movies, you're gonna be disappointed here. And of course we have Marissa Tomei as Hot Aunt May, which honestly I don't really have a problem with, because if she's really supposed to be Peter's aunt, and Peter's only, what, 15 in this movie, how old can she possibly be? To me, it just makes sense that this character should be about that age. It works. And besides, it's Marissa Tomei and she's awesome. You can't not like Marissa Tomei. If you don't like Marissa Tomei, you could call for Christmas. Those are the rules. Don't blame me, that's just how it works. I didn't make the rules, I just follow them. So deal with it. And of course, because Sony and Marvel are finally working together, Spider-Man gets to be part of the MCU, at last. So you have appearances from Iron Man and Happy Hogan and, in a couple of brief cameos, Captain America. He shows up in the form of some cheaply made public service announcement videos that the teachers in New York are required to show to their students, apparently. Even though he's technically a war criminal, it's still required viewing. What can you do? And as far as the bad guys, we have some brief appearances from Donald Glover as Prowler and Michael Mondo as Scorpion. It'll be interesting to see where those two are headed, but of course, the big bad in this movie is the Vulture. And Keaton was fantastic here. He nailed it, and I really liked how they portrayed this character. He is bad guy, but that does not mean he is bad guy. 
He's a classic example of a man who's doing all the wrong things for all the right reasons. And he can definitely be an intimidating presence, even when he's out of the suit. And I know some purists may not like the robo-vulture costume. I thought it looked awesome. Sue me. But like any good villain, he doesn't see himself as the bad guy, and there's even a moment where he gives a little I'm not the real villain speech. Now, there were a few things in this movie that I didn't really care for. I already mentioned Peter and Liz, whose relationship kind of felt like an afterthought, really. And I do wish that we didn't have to go with Peter Parker yet again. There are other people who have donned the Spidey suit. Like, could they not have gone with Miles Morales, really? Although... Prowler makes an appearance in this movie, and if I'm not mistaken, he's supposed to be Miles Morales' uncle, so they may be planting some seeds here. We'll see where they go with this. And while I am glad that we did not have to rehash the murder of Uncle Ben again, he's not even mentioned. There's one moment in this movie where they kind of briefly hint at it, but... They never even mention the guy by name. I, I'm i glad you didn't rehash the murder, but you didn't have to completely wipe the character from existence. Th there was a happy medium in there somewhere, guys. Come on. Also, still no J. Jonah Jameson. Still. For shame. What is it going to take to get him back? J.K. Simmons even said he'd be willing to do it again. And yeah, it would be kind of weird to have the same guy playing the character in two different sets of continuity, but could you really imagine anyone else playing the parts? J just let him do it again. And could you imagine a war of words between J.K. Simmons and Robert Downey Jr. as Jameson and Stark? I mean, license to print money, people. Come on. I need that. Overall, this was a ton of fun. I loved it. I highly recommend it. And if you see this movie, make sure you stay until the very end, because the post credit scene is wonderful. I'm not going to spoil a goddamn thing. I'm not giving you a hint of information about this scene. Just trust me, you don't want to miss it. And that's all I got to say about Spider-Man Homecoming. Till next time, take care.